Hey guys, this is Zyra from the Willow Tree Schoolhouse and welcome to my channel. Boy, do I have tons and tons of updates to share with you guys. So much has happened since the last time I shared, which was like six days ago, um, on my channel. Well, for starters, I was interviewed for a podcast and I was so nervous. Um, Todd, thank you for making me feel comfortable, for kind of warming me up to it. Yes, I am a social butterfly. I love socializing, but it takes me a little bit to recover from a couple of hours of socializing. And I was so looking forward to this, having just an adult conversation with somebody who homeschools. So I enjoyed our conversation. We had such an emotional conversation and I hope that you guys can kind of see that in me opening up my experiences and how I really do try to be in tune with my children. Um, so I will go ahead and I will link the interview down below. Um, please come back and share any feedback and if you find yourself in any way to be able to relate to me, reach out to me. I am always open to filling more people in my tribe, in my inner circle. That's something that I I want to create on my gram is, is a, it's a community, a loving and encouraging community. Also, we started homeschooling um, and it's been great. Our first week was amazing. We, Although we felt kind of burnt out by Friday, we did, it was like a very productive week. We got a lot of stuff done and the kids were excited to start our days. They were so looking forward to it. And I noticed the difference between starting your homeschool when they want to start it and then starting the homeschool when you establish the schedule. They were all for it. Their little ears were picking up and retaining the information. They weren't arguing with me. They weren't like um, putting up a fight. They were like, yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's learn today. So that attitude completely changed on me. Now that I did my whole couple of minutes of updating you guys, I wanted to make this video to be about read alouds and what exactly what kind of books I recommend for the little on my gram I share tons of books that I read to the kiddos and how I have them narrate and a lot of you guys are kind of confused on how to approach it when you do have littles at home and it's the first time that you are approaching chapter books into your homeschool listen I got you guys I'll help you I will simplify this and I'll make it fun for you guys to tag along so you guys can see how simple um, reading books can really be. Okay, I'm an actual avid reader. Growing up, my parents could not afford getting us books, but my mom prioritized weekly library runs. And in fact, there was a mobile um, library um, that would come once a week and my mom would take us there. And I loved it because I got to choose my books and I would read aloud or she'd make a point that while she's making dinner, she would have us all read. My older brother, all I remember from my siblings was that my older brother got into Harry Potter books. I didn't, I just loved everything. And so that's probably one of my favorite memories. So I make a point to make sure my kids look forward to library runs. Now, I am not picky as to what they read. However, I keep a mental note of what's appropriate at their age level and what's not. Here's the thing, a lot of books have these strong concepts that shouldn't be mentioned to children just yet. Now, I'm not about banning books by all means. I know there's a huge push on social media right now where you need to ban books for this and that. Listen, I'm not about banning books because I do believe that some books can bring out fruitful conversations. However, I am about temporarily shelving books that I know the concepts are too strong for the kiddos to comprehend, to understand, to to take in and to not let it affect um, their view of the world, I should say. That's actually really perfect to phrase it that way. I know I'm probably ruffling some feathers and I apologize because I know there's a lot of you guys that strongly believe in banning books. I don't. Um, there's a lot of books that can bring in fruitful and enjoyable conversations. Okay, but that was one of the concepts. I'm sorry if I got into it 
too much. Um, please don't attack me, okay? Please don't. I just, I just want you guys to understand how to best approach literature. Growing up, I used to just read books randomly. Um, it wasn't until I started homeschooling that I was introduced to the concept of living books. So I get asked a lot, what are living books? And I'm going to see if I can add a screenshot um that best explains the definition of a living book but basically it's like learning certain concepts or periods or through a first person basis where you get to know firsthand their struggles their thoughts and and you're able to be consumed by that character or that time period um i learned through our american history program when we read leaf the lucky that Living books is very powerful. Um, it can succumb to a reader in, and and fully fully engage themselves into that time period. They want to know everything, questions consume them, where they want to fully understand the character. So when we did our Vikings unit study, Aiden wanted to learn all about the boats, the ships, the armor, their thoughts, their beliefs, um, and so on and so forth. And it was all based on just one living book which was Dolaire's um, Leave the Lucky and so I try to introduce a lot of living books into our homeschool books that have meaning books that where they can learn um, while engaging in a, in a rich full literature I am going to go ahead and share a little bit of my experience and how we started incorporating chapter books into my homeschool so you, get, you guys can see the simplistic side of it and how you guys can replicate it into your homeschool so when we first started homeschooling my oldest was four and a half years old he was in preschool and then my daughter was two so she was my toddler baby and Ari wasn't even thought of yet um but when I first started uh, including chapter books we were reading picture books all the time and when I noticed that their attention when I noticed my oldest attention um, was pro being prolonged a little more and he was starting to narrate and tell me back parts of the book that's when I noticed that it was a perfect time to include chapter books into our homeschool my daughter did not know what chapter books were she did i honestly i don't even think she paid attention to any of our read alouds in those first two years of our homeschool so i always made a point to include chapter books and picture books into our homeschool yes i still continue to read to them i don't expect my oldest to read chapter books to me maybe a page here and there mostly readers i have them read but never any of the chapter books because I don't know i just feel like my kids pick up on a lot of the concepts and plots and twists when i read to them yes it will eventually evolve to them reading back to me or reading to me but that my oldest is seven years old i don't expect that from him just yet when i noticed that we were working on the habit of attention and i noticed that he was narrating back to me that's when i started to incorporate chapter book my top three most favorite resources for book suggestions are uh, the read aloud family um, by sarah mckenzie she has actually a podcast a book list out there available i will link it below um, I only own the PDF version of the book, but it's one of those books that I highly recommend you owning rather than just checking it out because she does a really great job at explaining the importance of including literature into your family. Um, and I don't know, it's just a magical book that I love to reference back. And at the back of the chapter book, she also talks about or includes book lists per age and grade level, I believe. Um, another reference that I looked, I like to look back is Ambleside Online. After every single year, they include a free reads book list. I like to get some of those um, book suggestions and kind of take a look at some of the books that I can include into our homeschool. Another book reference that I love to include is Teaching Characters Through Literature from Beautiful Feed Books. I will say this. One of the first books that I read was The Whipping Boy that was suggested from this. Um, and we don't use personally, listen, I know everybody's um, opinions may be different than mine. Let's not attack each other. This is a welcoming space. But I personally don't use corporal punishment as a way to reprimand my kids. And in that book, that's exactly what they do. 
um, they whip a boy on behalf of a prince who can't be punished physically. And so that was something that opened up a conversation that I wasn't fully prepared on, which is one of the reasons why I pre-read. Um, this was before I pre-read to my children and I can understand the importance of that book in itself, but I really wish I would have just been more prepared for it, you know? And the level of injustice that I saw in my kid's eyes and heart, and he was truly bothered by this book, I just felt like, yeah, I would start pre-reading. So maybe it's all for the books in this curriculum. Maybe it was just that one book, but just keep that in mind when you're referencing, um, that book list from beautiful feed books now moving on i will show you guys our favorite tried and loved chapter books that i included in our homeschool um mind you my oldest is seven and my middle child is four and a half years old she is now able to actually narrate some of the parts chapters in our current read aloud so i and that tells me that she's ready to be read to uh, more often now with chapter books than picture books, but I'm still gonna include picture books because name a kid that doesn't like picture books, right? So any of Roald Dahl's book, my children love, specifically my oldest, they're short and sweet. The one book that I haven't read to my kids is Matilda. I do plan on reading that one eventually. We just haven't gotten around to it. Another book is The Trumpet of the Swan. Aiden loved this book. Anything that just has an animal as a character, he enjoys. That's another thing to keep in mind. Pick chapter books that you know your children are going to be able to relate to or be fond of. So if they love animals, pick a book that has animals in it. If, if you have siblings listening, pick a book with siblings um, going on in adventures. You want to pick those books that just create a magical experience with. Um, another one is Bridge to Terabithia. My friend recommended this. I went for it. I don't recommend it for the younger age. It was just way too sad. We watched the movie. It was even way sadder. Um, I This was one of the books that I was like, yeah, it was probably not a good idea to to include in our homeschool. There's death, a best friend dies. Um, my kid wasn't ready for it um and the sassafras science now i have this included in this book list only because it is our curriculum spine um if you see that your children enjoy books why not incorporate um books like this into your homeschool my daughter is actually communicating with her siblings that's her actually talking um, but I did want to reference this and if you don't want to use this as your curriculum spine, I read it as a read, read aloud to my children a couple years ago and it was still magical. It was great. Um, the information is awesome. I just do, uh, personally, I feel like the story drags on with a lot of the drama that I could care less for, but my kids enjoyed it. Our current read aloud is actually The Magician's Nephew from The Chronicles of Narnia and this has been truly amazing. This is what my son referenced the other day when I tried to reprimand him for um, doing a, a joke on his sister and she or he quoted a quote from the book saying mom I was just trying to be beastly like uncle Andrew and my mama heart just completely melted and I was astounded by the way he was able to reference back to our current read aloud another book that I'm actually reading to my kids is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone I don't know if we're gonna dig deep into the series this is just one of the books that I felt like he was ready for his age and I see that he is however I have found that the next books in this series have true, have strong um, plots and um, themes into those that I don't know if my son is ready. Another book that my son will reference back a lot to is The Call of the Wild. Now, this is geared for ages seven and up. There's strong themes in here and my son has a sensitive heart this is when I started to realize that hmm, he may start to develop a backbone where we can start having these discussions 
because there was death, there was abuse, there was strong themes that I felt like he wasn't ready for and ultimately he ended up showing me that he is. Because of this book, we also started having these um, fruitful conversations about whether or not your nature, your surroundings can change you um, as a person, as a being, and how you adapt to your surroundings. And so I will always recommend this book, but definitely pre-read a lot of these books that I'm going to suggest just because they may be strong themes for your children. Another series, now this is one of the books that I um, suggest if you have siblings that are listening go into the magic treehouse. Not only are they going to be learning about history components and science um, themes, but they're following along adventures between a brother and a sister. And this was actually our first history program that we use using um, the Waldock Wade Passports to Adventures because it uses the magic treehouse series as their spine. And my, my oldest loved it and enjoyed it. And the books are actually very short and sweet and to the point. Um, who is books or who was books? Okay, so here's my thought about this. If you don't incorporate a timeline, a lot of the information is just going to go over their head. My kid at that time, because we were reading the Sassafras Adventures um, zoology, he wanted to know a real life naturalist. And so we dug deep into who is Jane Goodall. She's alive. We watched some of the documentaries. So unless your child is able to make fruitful con connections, I don't recommend this um, because a lot of the information can go over their heads. If you're just reading about a random person and you know what like you just feel like they're just going to retain the information, that's not how it's going to work. They do a good job at including a timeline at the end of the book but again if you don't actually incorporate an actual timeline a lot of this information is going to go over their heads at least that's in my opinion now the first ever chapter book that I included in our homeschool that I will always have a special place in my heart is the wild robot now there's a lot of death in this book the way they described, you know, the natural um, life cycle and uh, survival of the fittest and those strong themes was absolutely astounding. Um, now when we see a dead animal, um, unfortunately, when we go out on walks, they don't see it in a negative way. They just see it, oh, it was weak or something got to it and so on and so forth. Um, we, every time we see a goose, my son will reference back and say, I wonder if that's Bright Bill. So that makes me feel special inside. We did went ahead and read The Wild Robot Escapes. Those are the only two books in the series. Um, I heard that the audio book version of this is truly magical. I haven't listened to it. I read the entire series to my children. Um, also, I will say this my child was able to see that you don't have to be a bio biological parent in order to love a child they took that into a whole new level so um in the past we've met um children that were adopted and my child that was a concept that it just went over his head and seeing this he was able to make connections and he was able to see that love goes beyond blood so this book will always have a special place in my heart because of that because it did bring up fruitful conversations because my kids were able to have these strong connections and i should say my kid not my kids because millie at the time was on my toddler and i'm sure she doesn't remember any of this um but this is a book that i will eventually reference back to and revisit for my middle child uh, the Secret of the Hidden Scrolls, this follow biblical stories. Um, again, it follows a brother and a sister. It's very sweet, simplistic. Um, my oldest enjoys them. My daughter is starting to pick up on some of the stories in these chapters. So honestly, I don't know if she remembers any of the past readings, but again, that's one of the books that I will revisit. Now, Stuart Little has a special place in my heart as well. Um, Aiden loved it. He felt very encouraged by it, by how um, Stuart 
went on to these adventures. We also read uh, Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is actually our current uh, read aloud that we are revisiting uh, for our children's book club. And Millie was able to retell or narrate a past chapter. So that tells me that she's ready for chapter books. So a lot of these books that I'm going to revisit for her that were truly just amazing for me to read to Aiden that I know that she's going to be encapsulated by them. Little House on the Prairie um, books series. I own all of I've only read this book during winter break and I will revisit back just because Millie will be able to relate to the character because she now has a little sister. And a lot of this um, happens in Wisconsin and we currently live in Wisconsin and we have an up north cabin. And so a lot of this happened in a cabin. So I feel like this series, um, Millie will be able to kind of take it to a whole new level and relate to and make connections with. Um, and yeah, so that is how I chose my chapter books. These chapter books I highly recommend, but again, pre-read. I think this is it you guys i am so sorry this is all over the place this was my fourth attempt in making this video um and i hope i i don't know i hope i kind of simplified this process so you guys can see that you guys can totally replicate this into your homeschool and also let me know if any chapter book suggestions that you guys recommend um that you guys have found your children to be completely enthralled by i'm always open to including more chapter books into my homeschool so um please comment below your favorite children's chapter books um now if you guys found this video to be at all helpful please let me know um i try to make this video to be very simple and straightforward but i always feel like i drag on my video so i apologize if this is the case for this one um, but I saw that you guys enjoyed my previous day in the life video. So I'm going to do more of that. That's awesome that you guys enjoy those videos because I personally do as well. Um, and this is it guys. So if you found this video to be at all beneficial, please like it and please subscribe if you don't already and click that bell button so you guys can notified when I release a new video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this long and for you know taking the time to watch this video it truly makes me feel special that you guys do so thank you